Okie dokie. Well, hi everybody, and once again, it's cast time. And then, let me go ahead and uh, intro this music real quick. This is going to be Ziggurath, uh, Tales from Southern Realms. And uh, this this wasn't my first choice. Um, there were, I actually had another album earmarked for this, but I just figured since it was Dungeon Synth, um, I figured it was probably going to be free to use anyway. But uh, at the last minute, on a whim, I uh, figured just to play it safe, go ahead and do a copyright check on it, and good thing I did, because it was copyright, so can't use that one. So, uh, there, was a, there was another album I was wanting to use, I actually played it during my stream, but it just, when I actually listened to it on my normal speaker, it, it wasn't, it wouldn't have been a good fit for this video. So, so, scrambled around some more, um, eventually this album came up, um, uh, more, this is a desert, or desert dungeon synth. I played a, I actually played a, another Egyptian, Egyptian themed dungeon synth album called Anubis. I actually played that album on one of my other cast videos, but, so this one here, it's kind of the same thing, um, but su surprisingly it actually came out about a week ago. I figured it probably, I mean, because, on my, on my YouTube recommendations, it tends to give me a lot of the same thing, the same type of thing. Um, and then just, then this album here just kind of magically appeared right in the middle of it all. So I thought it was going to be a, a video that came out like five or so years, or five or six years ago or something like that. But no, uh, it came out a week ago. So, so fairly new here. So let me go ahead and get her fired up. And then, um, I didn't do much of a sound check on this one here, so I might have to adjust the sound up and down a little bit. But I do need to turn it down. It did it again. I don't know why it's been doing it, but originally I had the volume in my headphones set at 50, uh, but for some reason, between the transition between there and here, it decided to jack itself up to a hundred. Okay, I, st I still need to watch out about the one minute mark in case uh, YouTube decides to freeze up on me. Still waiting. Okay, I got it. There. I got to start this over. Hold on. It's not telling me the elapsed time, so yeah, this the whole screen's gonna get kind of messy here. So hopefully it doesn't screw things up too bad. Okay. But yeah, it wasn't ticking the time in the lower left corner. So now, yeah, this is kind of kind of poorly prepared here, I guess. So once again, I gotta, around the one minute mark, I gotta check and make sure that a YouTube doesn't freeze up on me. <sighs> kind of a bad start to this. So far, so good. But, like I said, YouTube's got a nasty habit of doing this. Like, around the one minute mark, it'll hang.
Okay, so... Uh, I think we're safe, so it's been about a minute and a half. But... Uh, but otherwise, uh, for today, this time around, I actually did it. This is actually a five-hour stream. So, I can't even remember the last time that happened. So, because uh, this time around, I think I laid down around 5 a.m., woke up around... I want to say it was around 12.30, 12.30 p.m. But um, this time around, uh, totally on a whim, I decided to go ahead and since I'm up and everything, I just went ahead and did my grocery shopping um, You know, this, er, earlier this morning rather than uh, during the evening, like after my stream. So so did that, got that taken care of, uh, then and then jumped on my stream. And yeah, it... Lasted about five hours, but again, not it's not something that I'm gonna make a habit out of doing. I mean, especially for a game like Idle Champs. I mean, not me, you know, not many people are on it, so it's it's practically a ghost town. So not something I want to sit around five hours for. So, but like, like I said, it but kind of good to blow myself out once in a while. So, but otherwise, um, but just did my usual, uh, just worked on quest completion, um, started, uh, unlocking new areas and stuff, and then there, um, some of the, some of the, uh, some of the sub-quest requirements are, or at least with me, too stringent, because I basically have to gut at least half my roster, it based, you know, your character, you know, only characters with a strength rating of 13 or more can be used. And, you know, like, at least half my roster has a strength of 12 or less. That pretty much makes that quest undoable for me. So I'm going to I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea. Hold on. Oh, and um, I am going to have a fair amount to cover here, so. But anyway, yeah, so we're... Again, worked on quest completion, um, unlocked a few new areas, and then um, also, like yesterday, I was trying to find some podcasts and various streams to watch, but I had none of, none of them were happening, um, whether due to like either they got sound issues. I think there was yeah, there was one where I literally had the volume on Twitch, um, in my uh. Yeah, the volume on Twitch and my headphone volume, all of them at the max, and I still couldn't hear. And uh, at the time, I I didn't think to type down like, "Hey, you need to turn your sound up," you know, you know, type it down in chat. At the time, I didn't think about it. It's just probably because I had I had so much other stuff that I wanted to do that it just like I said, it it just slipped my mind. So, but anyway, um, I think mean, there was like another one, but it just, they started talking philosophy, but I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm all, I mean, I'm always cool with that, but not in a stream. It, that kind of thing is something that, is something that requires my full undivided attention. You know, I need to sit down and actually watch it and not, not be in the middle of a stream, not in the middle of playing a game and all that. So, but yeah, there were, um, there were other videos that I was trying to, I was trying to watch, but they weren't, it just wasn't working out. So. So, that, uh, that left me with, uh, continuing on, uh, checking out D&D &D Beyond, reading the basic rules, and then, um, oh, what was it? And then over, over time, um, for those that don't know, the character that I created, or not, or almost created, I still have to, I still have to have a coherent backstory for him. Is um, he's called it's, it's the class is a monk, but um, I it's it's called a way, another way of saying kind of a specialization. Like my, the monk I created is a way of mercy. Um, part plague doctor, part monk. But if you ever um, I've said this in other casts too. He's basically the monk class on a. Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. Like, you know, he's, he's he's got martial arts, but
but he's all he's also got healing as well. He can heal party he can heal his party members and he can also revive them too. Oh and on top of that he can also uh he can also remove debuffs and stuff. So but um the the Mercy Monk is just like that. You know, he's got martial arts, he can you know punch and kick and kick ass and take names and all that, but he can also he can also heal and he can and but not until not until he's like 18th level or something like that but he has to be a pretty high level um he can also he can also revive dead players but unlike final fantasy tactics he this the the dnd monk he can he can revive them with full health all of their debuffs removed so whereas uh in final fantasy tactics you revive somebody and they they're revived with like one or two one or two points of health and that's it so but I, it just it kind of hit it kind of hit me though thinking about my character some more this guy should be a fucking paramedic like I, I it just it just dawned on me like you know you start thinking about like you know what do you what do you do when you're not adventuring that kind of thing I'm thinking you know I, I should make this guy a param you know make this guy a paramedic is you know as well as uh I also was also thinking you know having him like working in it you know you know in a, like in a children's hospital or an orphanage um in some of these other uh, D and D videos I was watching the word are more more than just a word but you know you know helping kids in an orphanage I think some of these uh some of these characters are talking about. You know, I thought it'd be so that could be part of his uh something to do during his downtime. You know, orphanages, kids' hospitals, um, you know, helping them, healing them, and um probably gotta put a probably gotta probably gotta get a little bit dark in here, but and uh if necessary, euthanizing them as well, like if like if they're terminally ill. And if their family wants to say pull the plug, then yeah. But that that is but uh that's even in the uh, D&D description of the Mercy Monk. Like, if they're, uh, if they're healing, is it enough to save them? They'll just euthanize them instead? Like, that, that is in the description. I don't know if that's the exact words, but... But yeah, just... But so, I've just been... Just thinking on that some more. Um... Hang on, I've lost, I've lost my train of thought real quick. Oh, and um, uh, but yeah, it it also did start. It also did prompt me to start uh watching more paramedic, watching more paramedic videos as well. And I and I did and I did talk about this during my stream as well. You know, just while while you know while perusing D and D Beyond. You know, and when, you know, when in a, when, when in an adventuring party, he could be the field medic, but, uh, he would all, you know, of course he would also need, uh, martial arts skills too, you know, he, kind of like, kind of like the cleric class, kind of, they're kind of, they're kind of swingmen, like a swingman or like the small forward position in basketball, you know, they're just, they, they help where needed. You know, sometimes they're needed on the tanking front, just run up and, you know, run up and dodge, you know, dodge attacks and all all that stuff, try to keep the monster's attention on them. Kind of like the monk on uh, World of Warcraft. The monk in there ha actually has a tanking spec. That's what he does. He's up there just, you know, trying to, trying to make them all miss their attacks and stuff like that. You know, or... Or if necessary, play a support role, heal everybody up. But you, you kind of get the idea. Um, you know, but um, again, when not adventuring, um, have him be a paramedic. Or, you know, have him be the caregiver. Or, if necessary, be the euthanizer. Um, but, um, one other one other thing too after going through a after uh checking out this website um and i 
I'm thinking about making um I'm thinking of making uh making a video excerpt of this. Uh like a video segment and then um making that and then uploading it to YouTube. But in case I don't, I'll go ahead and kinda explain it here. But um one other thing I came across and um and I really wish they would have they actually have a, a sub chapter of this devoted to role playing. Like how to role play your character. Like none of the other books that I can think of, first edition, second edition, and a little bit of third edition as well, none of those books have this that I can recall. Like how to actually role play your character. Because uh, you know, up until now, it the whole it's, it, it, they always uh they always mention role playing, divorced from the rest of the game. Like you're just supposed to kind of you're just kind of you're you're supposed to kind of figure this out somehow. You know, but no, but uh, fifth edition, there's actually a sub chapter devoted to to how to do this. Now, I'm, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, but I just, I feel this is kind of important to show. I think maybe, maybe if these earlier editions had the sub-chapter in here, maybe there would be more people playing it, or perhaps more importantly, there would be more people comfortable with playing it. So, I mean, you had, you had one part of it, uh, the descriptive approach to role-playing, where... All you do is just say, my character charges in, and or my character just charges in and attacks. You know, that's perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable. You know? My character takes out a crossbow and aims at the nearest orc. You can say that, that's acceptable. But you know, you know, and you're, again, you're looking at it right here. This is actually it's actually in the book. It's actually on paper now. Or you can. Or you can um. Or option B, and I'll bet. And I actually said this during my stream. This is um. This is probably the one. This is probably the one part that I think puts off a lot of people on roleplay. Is the active part of it. You know, you see uh. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take another drink here. I'm getting hoarse. Y'all, this is when this is when people literally act out their characters. You know, you're You know, and, and again, this I think a lot of this is probably the biggest part that a lot of people find very off putting because like a lot of people like myself, you know, we can play we can play RPG video games all day and twice on Sunday, no problem. But you know when you when you watch people do it on tabletop and you see, you know you see the, you know the potentially bad acting. You know you, and I, I actually said this during my stream too. You know you see like a whole a table full of people doing variations of "You're tearing me apart, Lisa." You know just that that movie, The Room. You know kind of like that. I mean again, I'm I'm with I'm with all you guys on this too. I mean. You know, you're watching this, it's just, oh my god, so cringy. You know, but, again, it, they they got this on paper, so... So, in this context here, it's actually, uh, for lack of a better word, acceptable. But, like, you know, but like I said, too, going back to what I said a few moments ago, this is, this is probably the biggest thing that uh, scares off a lot of players now. Certain, certain way I gotta put this. So I guess what I'm trying to I guess what I was what I'm trying to say here and what I was trying to say in the stream as well. You know, it if you don't condone it, at least understand it. And I also said this in some of my other casts too. The, the truth might be different from the, the the truth might be different on the inside. I mean I mean, because you know, on the you know, on the surface, you're watching them, you're watching them do this, and again, like all you guys, I'm like, oh my, oh god, like, t 
take some acting classes or something, you know, or or just do the descriptive approach and just, you know, just tell what your character is doing. Because, you know, the way you're doing it now is cringy as fuck. So, but again, if you don't, you know, if you don't condone it, at least understand it. But I think I, I talk more about this during my stream, which is where I'm thinking about uh, just, just making a, making a Twitch excerpt, making a stream, a stream segment, and just uploading that to YouTube. Because I, I think I talk, I talk more in depth on it. Because again, on the surface, you know, as casual onlookers, you're looking at it and like, you're like, man, what the fuck? But, but in the in the game, she might be going hardcore balls to the wall, you know, 100% emotionally, you know, emotionally invested in their character. And I think, and I think I forgot to make the connection in the stream, but it's almost like fighting games. You know, on the surface, you're watching, you know, you're just watching two guys just moving back and forth. You know, I ain't, you know, sizing each other up, like no fighting or anything. You're probably looking at it like, ah, when are you going to do something? You know, and you'd be like, hey, what they're doing is called neutral. They're trying to outmaneuver each other. I call it boring. You know, but you, but the players themselves... Again, they're probably fucking hardcore balls to the wall. I mean, they're, you know, they're really doing some serious mind games to each other. But on the outside, you're not seeing it. So yeah, that, I'm, you know, I'm seeing a connection between D and D and fighting games. So, but once, but quick recap. I'm really glad they had this in here, and I really wish they would have had this kind of thing. Um, you know, back in first and second edition and all that, because as far as I know, I've only seen this sub chapter in fifth edition in here. I've seen it nowhere else. So. Uh, but anyway, um, one more thing I need to talk about is uh, I think I watched a little more uh, more of the uh, resurrection of Jake the Snake, and we're getting to the part where uh, I totally forgot about this, but legendary wrestler uh, Razor Ramon, um, played by uh, Scott Hall, he's also in this movie, or I should say he's also in this documentary. Although I it totally slipped my mind at the time, and um, sorry for the spoilers, but um, I think. Jake relapses because at the at the where I'm at in the documentary, he's been clean and sober for uh, for two months. I think he said sixty days. So yeah, two months. Um, and now they're gonna and he's gonna relapse, and they're gonna they're gonna now they're gonna bring uh they're gonna bring Scott Hall in like Diamond Diamond Dallas Page. He's not. I think um, they asked him. He didn't go out and do this himself. Like he was, uh, he got a call from somebody saying, "Hey, Scott Hall is in really bad shape. Like he's a total alcoholic and he, he weighs 300 pounds or something. I can't remember the exact words, but hey, hey, DDP, can you help this guy?" And you know, and I think, uh, oh God, how did it go? But uh, the three of these guys, Jake the Snake, Razor Ramon, and DDP, yeah, all three of them were in WCW and they were actually a tag team so they know each other pretty well so they called up DDP and they asked him hey could you bring in Scott Hall as well um I don't know if they mentioned it or not but uh yeah I think this might have caused Jake the Snake to relapse because when you're, you're bringing in Scott Hall but you're also bringing in all the bad habits that he's that he's got so he's bringing you're bringing all that into the house as well so, bad influence, and I think that uh, I think that caused Jake the Snake to to relapse again. He goes back to drinking and all that. So, but again, I don't, I still have yet to 
watch more of this documentary, but I got a feeling that 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 was the cause of his relapse, of bringing in Scott Hall. Now my mouse is jumping. But otherwise, um, that's going to do it for me, everybody. Oh, that looks nasty. Red line. Like, in case anyone's curious, um, or for those that are just now checking out my uh, cast videos, the reason why it looks the way it looks is because um, my computer is bad, is bad to wear just alt tabbing now has the potential to crash my computer like it uh, it causes a forced restart it reboots my computer so i have so um i have to set it up i have to set up uh my cast videos now in such a way to where i don't have to alt tab out of windows i can just simply click on them so yeah it like i said it the the look is kind of goofy but like I said, I, I have to do it like this because um, cause alt tabbing through Windows is now a very risky proposition for me. So yeah, but but anyway, um, that's the cast video. Um, I've said all the things that I wanted to say this morning, so I'll just go ahead and call it good. Uh, but thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that, always do. And um, I should be able to make another one of these tomorrow. So, but until then. Thanks again for coming by, everybody, and I'll see you all next time. Bye now.